Today's episode of The Aggressive Life has adult themes and adult content. Aggression is one of the last dirty words in our culture. You can be crass, you can be rude, you can even be profane, but oh, aggressive, don't be aggressive, except it's wrong, dead wrong. I promise you nothing of meaning and transcendence will come into your life passively. It's time for you to get into the arena to push back against a passive, mediocre existence. I'm Brian Tome, and this is The Aggressive Life. It's only a matter of time until we have yet another active shooter incident. Yes, I said it, yet another. It's going to happen again, and people have been active shooters on the right, of the left, different races. But one thing, when I say active shooter that comes to your mind is a man, some shape, form, ethnicity, age of a man. Can we all say this is utterly crazy? Crazy, crazy, crazy. And the thing that I'm not hearing anybody talk about is a crisis in masculinity. I'm hearing all kinds of talks about what should we do about guns. Good, let's have those talks. I'm hearing all kinds of talks about what should we do about mental health. Good, great, let's have that that talk. But can we talk the obvious one to me? Why is it that men are killing things? Why is it that men are incredibly frustrated? Why is it that men are incredibly scared or at least a percentage of men are incredibly scared? There are massive changes that are happening in our culture around masculinity. Massive. Women are out educating men in the, on the college campus. And whoever has the education is the one who's going to get the dollars. So not only are women better educated today than men, but women are also getting higher paid jobs today than men. Women are doing things that they've never done before and men are doing and not doing things that they've never and have not done before. And by the way, none of that is bad. There is nothing wrong with a wife out earning her husband. In fact, I wish my wife would out earn me. Let me just say it right now. I wish she would, because if she out earned me, then I would have more guns and more motorcycles and more whatever. It would be awesome. Nothing wrong with it. But If that did happen, I would tell you, I would also have a side of me that would struggle because I never knew anybody growing up who had a mom who out earned their dad. That wasn't the case with my dad. We are seeing things happen in our world right now that are brand new to anthropological history. Never before in the history of the world, in the history of the world, have men had to cope with what men are coping with today and we are coming apart. And by the way, I think that women still have it worse. I do. This is not a pity party for men. I believe still in today's culture in America, women have it worse and it is harder for women. I'm not taking away from those pressures at all. I am just saying that there are unique pressures that are upon men that's causing the statistics we're going to talk about today. That's causing suicide rates more so in men than in women that's causing binge drinking in men, that's causing men to not be able to turn to church or if they do turn to a church, there's nothing there for them. There is a crisis today and it's not good, not good at all. So we're gonna aggressively talk about it with an aggressive friend of mine. Since starting The Aggressive Life, I've had the opportunity to talk to some pretty impressive men and women. We're we're talking about people who've been best-selling authors, Hall of Fame athletes, best-in-class businessmen and women. And then there's this one guy, my friend Judd, also known as 512, (laughs) 512. Yes, Mm. Judd Watkins, one of our early early episodes, and what do you know, he's in the top three on The Aggressive Life, the top three. The dude nobody knew is in the top three, so we're bringing him back. We're bringing him back, and we're going to talk aggression, and we're going to talk masculinity. This is not a man podcast, but I've got a real passion for men because I think that men have gone too passive. 
part of the reason why this podcast is here, the aggressive life. So we're going to talk about what is wrong with men? What is wrong with churches that men don't feel comfortable in churches? What is wrong with... I don't know, something else. Without, what else is wrong with something else? So here he is, my, my, my friend, drywall contractor, Judd Watkins, 512. How are you? Good. Good, BT. How are you doing today? Wonderful. Wonderful. Right. I'm wondering, did we explain last episode? Should we explain again exactly why I keep calling you 512? Yeah, we, we touched on it. We touched oh, we on it. Yeah, it's been, it's been covered. Oh, it I has. mean, if I remember correctly, we touched on it. If you, There's the we, we have We have a... Uh, we have a uh, a discrepancy in memory over uh, an awareness of something we had in our motorcycles. Yeah. And uh, it's still a tender place for Judd, which is why I still call him 512. Because you remember the old computers had 512K of RAM. First, I called him 640K of RAM. And then I said, no, we're downgrading that's, that's to 512. So we just 512. Hopefully, like 20% of your audience is old enough to know what the hell 512 is. I know. You seriously. Know? <laughs> seriously. I mean, they don't even, do they even have no, random access I, I, memory any longer yes, in yes, current computers? Exists, they do. Yeah. There is a, yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's talk about you. You, um, it's kind of crazy. You're on the God side of the equation. You weren't always part of the God side equation. We don't want to go back and rehash all the stuff we did before, but it was pretty intense stuff, man. I mean, it was, my gosh, I mean, your, your family of origin upbringing was pretty intense. Just, just give, give us one story that wasn't what you mentioned in the first one. Everyone should go back and listen to it. Give, give, give us one. Oh jeez, I don't. I don't uh, remember. I don't how many remember. people have? How many people have been killed in your presence? <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. See, <laughs> how many stories do you have? Those where are been punched in the face. <laughs> those are, oh, lots of punches uh, in the face, and an inordinate amount of death as well. But that I don't think. There, the death, seriously, oh, this yeah. guy have how many dead people? Dead people you've been around who've died? Teens. I told you about you've five. Never, I found you've never a, served in the military. No, right. This is just after. Teens of people <laughs> Teens of have people. died on your watch. Uh, in my periphery, yes. What does yes. it sound like when it's not, a head hits that's, concrete? That's the worst. That's that's a really, really bad thing. It is awful. No, I mean, it was... Uh, so, uh, my best friend uh, got in a fight when he was still in high school. I was freshman in college. And this guy was, gosh, I don't know, 24. There was a lot of back and forth. My friend hit this guy, his head hit the concrete. He must have been 6'3", and he didn't crumble. He f- toppled like a tree, and when his, his head hit the asphalt, and it sounded like somebody dropped a bowling ball from about six feet onto concrete. Um, and I, that's, a, that's a sound and a feeling I feel in my back right now as we're talking about it. Like, that's, it's not, that's not, it's a terrible thing. It is an awful thing. Yeah. It, it's one of the ways that Hollywood lies to us all the Absolutely. time. You can't get pummeled in the face as often as all those things are and then still function, and it, it just doesn't happen. No, I love Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne, that character, he's a short, stocky guy. I can relate. You know what I mean? He's just a badass. He's out doing his thing. But I'm watching these fight scenes, and not only are these guys like, first of all, I don't care what kind of an athlete you are. You're winded. You ever been in a boxing match? Yes, Three minutes of fighting, wrestling. You're just dead, right? These guys are fighting for 20 minutes, and they're doing all these death blows, and I'm like, hey, this is so far from reality like human life we are the, the crazy thing is and i don't understand how this works but we're way more robust than we think we are but we are way more fragile than we realize you know like death came to this guy i was talking about with the with, in a, a a flash he was there and he was not there in the flash like i can't there's no second there's no way to time it it was less than a second yeah. so yeah it's terrible all right so you you've got this really awful background in some ways awful background and then other ways like this thing of just being around a lot of people who have gotten punched in the face punched a lot of people in the face been around a lot of people who have died in your presence i i haven't most of us haven't who've been in the military but you've got a very man just a very rigorous background Mm -hmm. a lot of stereotypical manly stuff going on there and now you find yourself in the faith going to a church did you ever see that one coming? Oh, wow. No. Um, gr- growing up, um, there there was no church part of our life. My gra- you know, the Creaster thing, right? Yep. Creaster, Christmas and Easter. My grandmother, uh, she would go to church. There was some cr- tiny little shred of Catholicism down in there, but no real religion whatsoever. No church to, be, to speak of. Definitely no church community. And then I got married and my wife, Danny, had grown up young life and church was a big part of their lives and her mom's in Bible studies, all this stuff. And so f- our entire marriage, so it took her... 11 years of dragging me church shopping for, for me to finally find a place that I could relate to. I, I was, there was a church in Mason, uh, gosh, in the, in the late 90s that sort of for 
a month or two maybe captured my imagination a little bit. And I was like, hey, I can I, I, I hated the place, all the cardboard Christians, all the plastic people in there. They're just looking at each other, not really looking for God. They're like just checking the box. I saw you there Sunday, whatever. So. So you said a month or two. Yeah. So what 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 does a church like look like from an average guy's perspective? Because average guys aren't going to church. Yeah. What uh, did you see? Well, the assumption. I think it's more important about what I thought I would see more than what I saw. Right. Because the thing the thing is, guys aren't coming to church because they assume what they're going to see at church. They're not actually coming to church and seeing what they see. So it's the the thing that. I assumed, and I would imagine most guys do assume, is all you're doing is going to a room full of paunch-bellied, castrated Christians with that have that skin that's look kind of translucent because all they've ever been under is like halogen lights or whatever it is in an office building. They've never been outside. Like cutting the grass is the most outdoorsy thing they ever do and stuff like that. So I wasn't interested in being around those guys that, you know, they talk real quiet. How are you, brother? It's really good to see you this week. I don't need to talk to that guy. I'm not interested in that guy. Mm-hmm. And I thought, that's who I had to be to go to church, and that's all I'd find at church. So, yeah, I, was, I just wasn't interested. My wife drug me <laughs> to this church. I did it to appease her. Um, and so I go, and the, the pastor was a young guy, and he was very intelligent and very articulate. And instead of a message that was all about let's feel good and let's hold each other's shoulders and hands and all this navel-gazing bullcrap, it was like he was he was teaching theology, a little bit of history, and some content that applied to life. I'm like, oh, I can I can get what I need to get out of this from this guy at least. And then he left for some reason, and you know his his father came in, and it was back to the whole yeah. Peace be with you. Yeah, do not put five twelve in a box, boys and girls. Just because he's heard melons smash as people's heads on concrete, you've got quite a melon yourself. You, you're a thinker. You, yeah. you like to think deeply about things and to, and to read things. Mm-hmm. And, and so that intellectual itch got itch for you at that yeah, church. The intellectual side did. The spiritual side did not, but it prepared me for that, I think, is what that is. What keeps average men from having their spiritual side itched in a church or anyplace else? I, I, can, I can speak for me because I really do feel like I am. I, I, I think I'm pretty average in a lot of ways. And the thing is, when when I can see a guy who I relate to on stage, who I could see myself having a beer with on stage, given a message that I can relate to and understand in my life, and I don't feel like at any time I'm ever asked to check my masculinity, right? It's important to me to say I can be that guy who I am outside the building as I am inside the building, and that's not... I don't, I don't need to put on some facade, which is really what I was getting at with the cardboard Christians and the plastic people. The church I was going to for a little while, that it, it was really big on the, oh, did you have the Yukon XL? Oh, I have the, I have the XL XL, you know, and it's black with chrome wheels. Did you have the chrome wheels? Ooh, you know, oh, your daughter looks nice in her dress. Is that a J.C. Penney's or is that a Coles? You know, I'm like, what the hell? We're here to talk about Jesus. Is there Jesus. a difference between J.C. Penney's and Coles? Man, I don't know. I'm just I throwing words out. I think you're just making things up because you never had a daughter. No one, no one actually says that. I'm just saying. But it was all about checking those boxes on what it was the it was the image being portrayed not the heart being changed and that's the thing like when i come in when i came to crossroads the room's dark crossroads by the way this is uh this is oh, my sorry. day job this is my day job my pastor by day at crossroads that judge talked about so go ahead so and when i came to crossroads which is a church in cincinnati and actually lots of places now um i came in the room it's dark and there are people before you even get into the the room uh there are people this guy's in a suit this guy's in his jammies, and nobody cares either way, right? You come in, the room's dark. The peop- the band on stage is worshiping. They're not performing for me. They're sharing their talents with me, but they're worshiping God. I'm like, cool. And then if somebody gets up, you or you know whoever it was at the time, different times, is is given a real message in a real way, and not as it was just it all just felt authentic, and it and uh, yeah, and I responded to it. Yeah. So men are hurting. Men are in a bad way in our culture. The stats tell the story. We have a life expectancy five years less than females. We commit suicide four times the rate of females. We're two times more likely to binge drink. We've got higher alcohol-related accidents and death. Men are experiencing record levels of mental health issues. Something is chewing up and spitting out men in our country. We are not well. What do you think it is? Wow. I think if you look at the Bible, uh, and I don't claim to be a Bible scholar at all, but when you look at the Bible, all these heroes of the Bibles are, are, are these men. And, and where are they now? The, I heard a stat that 30% of church attendees are male. 30%. Yeah, so where's the that's rest That's a of? generous estimate. Okay, so, so why aren't they... 
why aren't they here? Which is, I know, what the, kind of what we're talking about right now. But I think that's it. When we when we've lost our way, when we're given as men out, forget forget church for a second. If as men in our culture, we're given two options. You can either be this passive guy who just kowtows, you know, the sitcom dad. We all know the sitcom dad, the fat guy with the hot wife. I might I might portray that a little bit in my life, but you know, the, the sitcom. <laughs> yes, the sitcom you, I know, yes, I know easy, do. easy. I'm not the king of oh, queens. Relax, wow. relax. So, judge not but, lest she be judged. <laughs> so, oh, I guess I, I guess you can be judged by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, so you're you, saying you are overweight and your wife is better looking than absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, but this, so, but in, you know, in a lot of these sitcoms, it's his dad who he's the foil of every joke. He's a klutz. He's a putz and whatever else. Or you've got this macho man who's got truck nuts and listen to jog jams. He's got Chevy Silverado with the Cummins Turbo Diesel, if they even make a Silverado with a Cummins, I don't know. But, they you know, don't. you got these, I know. <laughs> Was it a Duramax? What do they put yes, in Chevy? Yes, it's Duramax. So anyway. God bless America. But, but you're, you're and running. I don't have one, though. I've got a Chevy, yeah. not the Duramax. Go ahead. Yeah. You, you, you you made me just lose focus for a moment. I was just, I was just <laughs> drifting off into the Neverland going, oh, diesel in my truck. Go ahead. Well, that's that, all that to say, if we're given two choices, to be this macho man caricature of what manhood is, or this passive anti-male, we're not meant to be either of those, right? We're not meant to be those caricatures. We're meant to be truly and authentically men, and we don't have an example for that. We don't have anybody talking to us in that way. Nobody's celebrating that. Everybody's apologetic if they say anything. Men are good. I'm sorry to say, but men are okay. You know, it's. I just don't feel like we have anywhere. There aren't many places in culture where um, people are getting a real look at what manhood can be. What do we have? We've got like there's art of manliness and Joe Rogan and these things. I'm like, I don't know, Joe Rogan, cool, great guy, maybe has a great following. And guys flock to it because they see a sense of something real in there. But basically what I'm saying is without the right thing to be drawn to, there's a lot of wrong things because men are still looking for that connection, I think. Whenever we get into this topic, and this, again, the Aggressive Life is not a man podcast, but it is a one on aggression, and uh, I have a heart for men. There's always women who get upset that I'm leaving the women out. There's always women who get upset that somehow, for some reason, I only care about men. That's just not true. It's, uh, not true. It's just not true. And I, I, I never understand. Why, why, why would a woman come to that conclusion that just because I'm trying to reach men that I don't care about women? Well, because, again, part of the dumbing down of our society is if you ever notice any ad, it's like, this is the best thing the Internet's ever seen. The Internet's going crazy about this. It's the most awesome backpack in the world. Everything has to be the best. And people think that if, if you're celebrating men, you are not for women. And that's not how that works. You can celebrate both women and men, right? You know. Yeah. So people think if you like A, you don't like B. Automatically, don't like B. That's not how that. That's not how the world actually right. works. Right. I can just tell you from my wife, the the change that's happened in my life over the last several years and through our marriage, embracing this, you know, embracing embracing faith and authentic masculinity and whatever different ways I've done that. Her life is dramatically better. Our marriage is better. Every, it's all better. So Danny, also known by me as Danny Boy. Yeah. Danny Boy super, was— Super creative, by it, it is yeah. creative. <laughs> oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes. No one ever called her Danny Boy before. I'm sure, yeah. Right. I uh, doubt it. Yeah, there see? are a lot of really hot women getting called boy. <laughs> yeah. So Danny Boy would say what about what has changed with your now current form of masculinity? What's different? I, well, so the the first um, the first bike trip we ever went on years ago, we went to Wyoming and did ten days on the Continental Divide. Which why did you go on that bike trip? Because <laughs> you're a cheap bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus puts all things to His purposes, right? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so I, yeah. I, 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 I needed to cut down my gas costs going out there, and I needed another bike. <laughs> and someone had told me you were riding, and I was like, "Huh?" Uh, you had no idea who I even was. No. You, you could not have put a face with a name. No. Never. All I knew is you could give me some Ben Franklin. Right. That's, that's, all, that's all I cared about. <laughs> that's all I cared. So. It, it, it's wonderful that one of the greatest inflection points in my life. It really just boils down to you being a tightwad. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it worked. It worked. But yeah, but I came back from that trip, and we'd spent that week um, really struggling on some things. You know, would I wreck the, the? How many thousands of times did I wreck my motorcycle? Oh my gosh, thousands. 
or how many thousands of times did you keep all of us from riding the way we wanted to ride because we had to pick your bike up? How many thousands of times? All of those times. Yeah, each of those yeah, times. Each yeah, of yeah, those yeah. times, yes. Yeah. Well, now you got to realize, before we went on this 10-day trip to Wyoming to spend it all in the woods, all off-road on motorcycles, I had neither camped nor ridden off-road on a motorcycle ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so— it was a big step, but so, but that was aggressive. I and mean, people look at you right now and go, "Oh, you know, you, 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 you have these aggressive things, Judd. You're, uh, you, you're a business owner now. I was aggressive. Yeah. You, you're camping. I was aggressive. You're on a motorcycle. You're, uh, well, you weren't doing any of those things seven years ago. So, six, how many years ago? Eight, nine? Well, how many years ago is that oh, now? Gosh, seven or eight. Okay. Yeah. So my point is, being aggressive isn't doing one of those stereotypical stereotypical things. Being a man isn't doing and having stereotypical avocations. But you had an aggressive attitude which caused you to buy a motorcycle for that trip and commit to camping for nine days and you had never done it before in your life. There was a, let's try something here. Let's do something. And that's what I want to see more people do. I want to see people trying something. Well, doing well, something. Well, and that's try the, something new. Yes, totally. Well, I mean, okay, try and do. Let's not think. Let's not research. Let's not, I don't know, whatever the hell it is guys do that don't do anything. God made me in such a way that I move from thought to action faster than most people I know, luckily, or I wouldn't be doing any of this stuff, right? Luckily, I moved from thought to action. So when I got the opportunity to go on this trip, I didn't sit on it for three days going, well, I don't know, should I? I guess I need a training course. Man, do I need to look at Bear Grylls for 20 hours to figure out how to camp? I was like, yep, I'm in. Let's go. What, are we gonna, what do I need to do? You sent me a motorcycle. You text me an ad for a motorcycle. I had a motorcycle that I needed to add bags to. And you're like, yeah, but you're also going to need A, B, and C. So uh, let me look for a new motorcycle for you. So you sent me a text with a motorcycle. Again, we don't know each other. I mean, right? You sent me a text for an incredibly expensive motorcycle that I'm like at dinner at Bangkok Bistro overnight party. I was like, uh, yeah, that looks great. Uh, she hit the guy. Hey, what do we need to do to do this? He's like, I need a thousand dollars. PayPal, thousand dollars. <laughs> okay. Motorcycle ship. Great. We're gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, luckily I'm, I'm made to do that, you know, but other guys, it's just a choice for other guys. You just got to get uh, off. You got to get off right the starting line. right there. Yeah. You're not, you're made to do that. See that, that sounds like. Well, I'm just not a disciplined person, you know. I, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't have the discipline gene. Well, I just, I, I, well, it's easy for you. I'm just not that way. Yeah, yeah. I, you're not made to do that. You've chosen to do that, and now it's become part of your mo. Sure, that's yeah, that's right. I, I think really where I was going with more of the made stuff is, you know, like there are great professional baseball players. Right. And the, some of these guys and there's Ken Griffey, who was a great professional baseball player. Now, he's got a lot of gifts and talents that were just innate in him growing up. Right. And there's these other guys that had to work their asses off to be half as good. That's all I'm saying. Is we might have it at different degrees, but guess what? We all have it. And you can talk yourself out of it as well as I can talk myself into it or whatever else. So, yeah. Anyway. So I've got a new book coming out, a devotional coming out, Move, that you actually helped me get the title for yeah. around the campfire. Actually, yeah. We, we, we dumbed it down a little bit from your really great idea. It was. We had it. It was there, and then we decided, ah, I don't know if we could do it. I saw that. Uh, well, well, so tell everybody what your original idea it for the title was. Move. Was. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the original, yes, original title? Yes, yes, So you said, yeah, I got this devotional for men, four men, two men in my voice, which I think you have a great voice speaking to men. It's great. Um, Thank you very much. I'm very proud of my voice. Well, I don't, I don't mean the in the studio voice. I mean, like, literally, the way you talk, the way you speak to men, men respond to, that's important. It needs, we need more of that, whether it's you or other men. Like, I don't know. It needs to happen more often, whatever. Um, but you said, yes, yeah, so we're working on this devotional for men. You know, I've got all these prompts and these things. And. You want to hear what it's called? I was like, oh, man, yeah, I'm pumped. Yeah, what's it going to be? It's called The Little Black Book. And I was like, what the hell is that? I was like, do you even know what A Little Black Book is? <laughs> Where the hell did Little Black Book come from? Because guess what? I'm not buying at Berean Family Bookstore or whatever. They have, wherever they sell this stuff. They I don't, don't sell them anymore <laughs> anymore because all those stores are gone. Okay. Well, what are, are, turns Amazon? out people don't like seeing trinkets when they walk into a door. <laughs> all I'm saying, okay, that's biblical. I got you. Yeah, yeah. All right. So anyway. I don't know where I go, but I'm never going to go buy a thing for guys called the Little Black Book, right? I was like, what the? Anyway, so, and you were telling me about what it was. I was like. Say that again. I just like how you say it. Little Black Book. Let me do it like Laser Bear. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think I should do the Laser Bear. No, don't do Laser Bear. But um, anyway, 
you told me that, but you told me what it was. I said, wait a second. So, so tell me more about what these things are. And you were kind of expanding and telling me more and more about what the concept of, of the book was. And I was like, oh, yeah. So you should call it Move. And he, you were like, there's 66 prompts or I think yeah. is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, 66 prompts to get you off your ass, right? You're, no, to get you off your spiritual ass yeah, is what it was. Right. Yeah. And that had some traction. And then I saw you've, done, you've, you've softened that a little bit. I did. Yeah. I did. I was excited. I came back. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. No, we use the satellite to text Ben from, from the campsite. We're in the middle of nowhere. No service. We right. got a, the right. satellite communicator. We're like texting. I was all excited. I was right. like, oh, hyper, yeah. hyper excited about yeah. it. And uh, hyper excited to have some swear words in there as well. Because, you know, the, the, the idea behind that, it, when you read it for the first time, you're going to go, oh, I remember BT talking about this on the campfire. No, I, I, no, I just uh, – so you sent me a copy. I'm flipping through this. The structure's great uh, as, it, as I ex- expect it would be. So a lot of people could design the like it needs to be A, B, C, and then D. Cool. The, the structure's great. But also exactly what you said. I'm not kidding you. I'm reading it day after day, prompt after prompt. It, they are actual discussions we've had around a campfire. Yeah. I mean – I can remember the words that were coming out of your mouth around the fire, and they're on the page in front of me. Mm-hmm. And it's super familiar, and it's great for me. They're also, as, as they were when they came around the campfire, they were great for my life. Yeah. So, this I mean, is yeah. A, this is the reason I was excited about this project, is I've written books before, and you think it's bad in churches yeah. that only 30% of guys are going to church. My goodness, in book publishing— it's like 10%. Like, there's not many dudes who are buying books or reading books that are, have a Christian thing going. They're, they're right. just not. So I said, hey, I do not need to have this book with an editorial team of some publisher that's all run by women because mm-hmm. I've been down that thing before. Mm-hmm. Like, the last book I did, Five Marks for a Man, I kept going around and around with their editorial team. Went, well, we need to be more explanatory on what it means to hit on 12. I said, no, we don't. Every guy knows. Sometimes you hit on 12, sometimes you don't. Your female people who might not be as into blackjack. Is, yeah. So I just like, man, I want to write this thing with a mask and voice. So I was like, I'm going to put it just like I do around the campfire. Mm-hmm. And that's all I did is went through my mind and said, let's just hijack all those conversations I've, I've shared with guys yeah. dozens yeah. and dozens of dozens. And I had the words in there and everything. And then at the last one, I was like, yeah. But, <laughs> but if I say get your spiritual rear in gear versus your spiritual ass, I'll get literally blackballed. It'll be hard for me. Yeah, to, right. You know, so I, 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 right I did tone some yeah, things down. Yeah. Right. But I, I will say this, the whole idea of like when you hit on 12, every man knows it. Maybe every man doesn't know that. But guess what? It's okay. Sometimes I hit on 12. Right. I, know, I don't want to get into the details. All right. Whenever you guys do, go do, to the— Do you hit on 12 you, or not hit on 12? I don't gamble. You don't gamble? You, you know, you've you never done blackjack? Casino, no, I've done it. But every time we go to the casino, I go get a beer while you guys go have your fun with the thing. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll catch up with you guys a little bit. Yeah. Because we don't all have to do the same Right. You know, I mean, right. You know, it doesn't have to be all the same. Yes. So— I could. So I, I didn't know that you had any reactions to the manuscript we sent you over ahead of yeah, time. So that's yeah. cool. Was there one section in that that you just want to riff on yourself? Like you think people should be hearing this and they should be doing that. anything that comes to your mind? Well, there are, there are two back to back that are about doing about mo- actually, you know, the whole book's called move and it's all, these are all different ways you can move. And, and I love that, that the, the practical steps like cool, pr- read, consider, pray, go do something. But I'm just, I'm a big fan of movement. I think the best way to learn to do something is to do it and figure out. And it's okay to fail. It's okay to it's okay to make mistakes. It's a, but it's the worst. The, the tragedy is when guys don't. They talk themselves out of things. You know. Yeah. I can't. The whole the whole difference between I couldn't do something and I didn't do something. You didn't do something because you opted out of trying to do it. You couldn't do something. Oh, huh, now that's interesting to me. That means you tried to do something as much as you could. And you were eventually stopped. And people say, well, isn't that failure? I couldn't do that. There's no, you don't learn anything from success. You learn from failure. You learn where your limits are. You learn where your limits aren't. Because yeah. guess what? Most of the time, those couldn'ts that you imagine aren't even there. You get there, you're like, oh, I totally did that. So I'm a big fan of getting in motion and taking that risk. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's part of the reason why I think our churches are, and our, actually not our churches, just, just spirituality in general in our country is 
lacking men is because spirituality in our country means, oh, what's your thoughts? What's yeah. your beliefs it's, on? It's navel Did you feel yeah, this? Right. How many angels could dance on the head of a pin? Do you believe yeah. in predestination or not? Do you right. believe in it? It's this theoretical up right. there. How are we feeling together right. when the average guy from the beginning of time has meant to be a hunter, yes. a killer of things. I go out and I kill something so I can eat. I go out and I build something so I can, now I'm thankful I don't have to kill anything to eat these days. I'm thankful my house was already built for me when I bought it. But you still need to scratch that itch by doing I projects do. around your house, by hunting. I mean, that's something in us. I do. Yeah. And if we do not have a spirituality that is giving people, I'm not even talking about guys, I'm talking women who have the same exact thing. Absolutely. Many, yeah. If we're not giving them some way to apply their faith, to make a move, to put their neck on the line, to feel like they're making a difference in the world, we're going to keep having the same results we've had. No, you're right. And I think what's important to think, even think about what you just said, as far as the move book and even five marks of man, none of the concepts in either of those books are completely applicable only to men. My, I mean, my wife loves to go camp. She loves to take risks, do challenging things. And there are tons of women that love to do that. The important thing is, the reason it's so important is because guess what? Women figured it out a little bit more than we have when it comes to faith, right? I know myself really, really well. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. I know myself. That's true. And I know where I'm going in life. I know where I'm moving. Stop <laughs> asking me what my number is on the Enneagram. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you because I'm never going to take the test. Oh, a... Why do you think I'm never going to take the test? Because you're an eight. <laughs> no, I, don't 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 categorize me. Don't categorize me. Here's why people go. Oh, you take Here's why. If I thought the Enneagram would help me move any place else any quicker oh, than right. I am, That's then right. I would do it. Those tests are not there to help you go. Oh, I understand myself better. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, they're not there for right. self. No. If you're taking stuff for self discovery, you're discovering that you are a passive person. Right. Those things right. are only there so that you can know more to move yourself down the line. Right. And I can't imagine taking any other inventory that's going to help me be more purposeful or more driven right well, now. There's a couple of things. First of all, about what you just said, the thing I know about you, of many things I know about you that are unique to you, the thing I absolutely agree with and know about you that if if you thought that that thing would help you move forward, you would absolutely you would have done it before anybody else did it, and you would build your life around what you learned on it. Because I know you you have a way of doing that that I aspire to. You like you see what you need to what you need, and you go after it, you get it, you do something about it, and you keep going. It's awesome. The other thing to that is I took it because my wife said, "Hey, you should take this be fun." We were in a small group, whatever yeah. the hell it was, and so I did it, and it was like it told me what my number was. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, uh huh." Like, and what? Are, like, you, are, you, like, are you a number two? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> You're not a number two? No, I'm not a number two. What the? No, I'm not. But what I'm saying is- That's it, a double entendre if you weren't catching Yeah, that. I know, the poop thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, even yeah. a double entendre. Okay, that's, okay, just, yeah. that's just an entendre. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, but I'm like, who gives a shit? Okay, I'm a this. Yay. Now, and now what, right? All right. So, whatever. Yeah. Well, if I was in a small group and it was going to be part of the discussion, okay, that, that'd be that'd be one that's thing. That's it. You know? That's all I'm saying. It's it's interesting to talk about, but again, are we just sitting in a small group talking? Right. What's changing the world in a small group talking? Whatever right. happened in there right. that changed anything? Just, just I, by the way, I am pro Enneagram. I know people who love it and has helped them. So um, that's fine. I got a problem. I'm just saying again, here in our culture, this is like our spirituality. An atheist can be really into the Enneagram, and if all it is is giving you interesting thoughts, yep. it's not helping you. Aggression is when you actually do something different with your life. You actually move. Move. That's the thing. I don't. It doesn't matter what it is you're doing. If Enneagram helps you move, awesome. Enneagram's great for you. If whatever the the thing is in your life, the if you go to a class, thinking's not bad. Only thinking is bad. Movement has to, nothing ever happens from just sitting around postulating ideas. That, who gives a shit, you know? Think about some good stuff, then go do something. Oh, I don't have this idea. I love it when people tell me that. My idea is not fully formed. It's never going to be fully formed until you do some shit. <laughs> and then you'll know that you had it wrong over here, so you That's can change. Right. You know what I mean? Go do something. In case you notice, we're having a lot of bleeps in this podcast. Oh, don't we're bleep trying it. to make. You bleep the well, whole other podcast. I have to. I have to. You... I know. It's good. It's good. I don't want you to stop talking the way you're talking. Okay. You have to talk the way you're talking. But I want as many people hearing this as possible. Okay. So keep talking the way. But we're having to bleep them just because now, the whole thing. Hold on. Hold on. And, a and uh, you are a drywall contractor. Oh, yes. you're, <laughs> Look, you're a drywall wait, wait, wait. contractor. You, they... So if everyone's mad at me, I did not bring on a pastor here. 
here. Oh I brought gosh. a drywall contractor onto this. This is what you get. You know, wait, wait. Let me tell you something. First of all, they've been able to say the word on primetime television since 1984, so get over it. Second of all, if you, in your holy world and if in your faith and your religion, my language, my using the word once or twice or maybe 17 times, whatever it is, is, is something that causes you a problem? Are you telling me that the rest of your spiritual life is so buttoned up that that's the kind of stuff you got to worry about is whether or not that guy said or this guy drank a beer? No, you're lying to yourself or somebody else. So that's that's all I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah, that, I can cuss. Please don't bleep the whole thing out. At least put short bleeps in so you can still hear the rest of the I stuff. I don't know. I'll think about it. I, if, if it bothers you, I might just go ahead and bleep I, them out. Just, <laughs> no, that's exactly it. It would just be one big bleep. One big, there's a big Seventeen, <laughs> 17 <laughs> minutes. Here's Judd Watkins on the aggressive like. <laughs> Just, just to and then annoy it's you, you. It's you doing that that little chuckle. Ah, 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 and then, ah, 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 ah. do the little chin thing when you get the little chin going. Ah, 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 ah. All right, go ahead. That's good. Finally, we see the real five twelve. You're yeah. trying to be all clinical in when? here, and all the whole time you always come in here always so buttoned up at the beginning. Like, well, I am Judd Watkins, and I am a very, <laughs> I'm a very thoughtful individual. Even though I've seen real life skulls smashed before my very eyes, oh my. even though I've been with multiple district attorneys around the charges of murder, I'm a very normal person who's very well thought out. Two district attorneys, because the first one got fired because I fouled him up in court. Okay, whatever, <laughs> whatever. So the church I lead, we try to be more on the masculine side, not not only reaching men, just recognizing it's a bit it's a bit harder to reach men, and and they take a little bit different tact than women do. And we had a, a, a man series a number of years ago, I say a number, I don't know what it was, four years ago, five years ago. And before that, we had another man series about two years earlier. We said, okay, let's do this again. And so we need to have some kind of next step application for people. Why don't we, why don't we, it was Judd and I sitting around with like three or four other guys. We said, hey, I don't know. Why don't we, why don't we have something that men can come to and sit around a campfire and be pushed and have adventure and get outside their normal routine, except they, they don't need to have a motorcycle or any of these kind of things. Why don't we do this? So we talked about that one day, and then I called Judd up, and I said, hey, what, 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 what was oh, the conversation? Gosh, never, it was like December 22nd. We talked about this in the middle of November. December 22nd, end of the day, the phone rings. And I was in the middle of doing something at work, and the phone rings. Hey, BT, what's going on? You said, hey, 512, uh, that man thing we talked about. Yeah. He, you uh, you still interested in uh, in uh, taking charge of that? Yeah. Okay. It's yours. Great. Have fun. Get, check back in with us. And that was it. You hung up. That was it. You were like in an elite team meeting or some whatever the teams are around here. You were in some some big muckety-muck meeting, and you, it was a 30-second phone call where you said, great. And I, there was no, like, follow-up with me in right. two weeks. Or right. stuff. <laughs> whatever. It's like, great. Good. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. It was. Yeah. It was wonderful. Yeah. You want something done, get it to give it to somebody who's busy and you're very, very busy and yeah. my gosh, you just you just got it done. So paint the vision for what Man Camp is. Some people have been, some people haven't been. Uh what what is it? What has happened? Just oh, get on your stump yeah. speech. Jeez. So Man Camp, um gosh, Man Camp is just sort of sort of the nuts the the, the, the condensed version of what we're talking about. Like where do men have an opportunity to to be fully men and fully love Jesus at the same time? And it and when I say that I think Think, well, I just ran off a bunch of men saying fully love Jesus. But like, this is the most the most non threatening way to come in and, and understand what it can look like to really do both, right? So it's a weekend camping trip. You come out Friday night. You leave Sunday afternoon. It's primitive camping. You bring all your own gear. You provide own your all your own meals. We have we have um, messages. Uh, you give a lot of the messages. We have some other people giving us stories and things like that. We have prayer. It's just it's it's the easiest thing to invite your neighbor to, and it's the best weekend you'll have. In a church, it's the least churchy church thing you'll ever go to. I'll tell you that. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's really crazy. We have, <laughs> we have, we have all the beer kegs right beside a tent where you can yeah. go and get prayed for, and the lines in the prayer tent are longer than the than the beer. Yeah. But we have long beer. I mean, how, how many how many kegs do we? We go, go through about through? eighty kegs in a weekend. God bless America. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's the it's the largest single beer sale for the local Miller Coors house. Yeah. Every time we do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. And those two things live well together really, really well. Absolutely it's crazy. Right. Now, put, just push on one thing you just men mentioned. You just said, fully love Jesus. Yeah. See, I think you're more feminized than you think you are. Okay. So what does that mean? What it means is, 
Like, would you ever want someone saying, I want to just fully love Judd, like me saying, I want to fully love. I, I can't think of a Bible verse that tells me to fully love Jesus. I, I think of Bible verses telling me to lay my life down. I think of Bible verses telling me to follow him. I, th- I think of those kind of verses, but I think even that is vernacular that something a woman would say that I would never say and I don't say. Here's another one. You know, we've got a, we've got a song that I like singing in church, but it's, it's very awkward for any man to sing. What a beautiful name it is, yeah. the name of, I think to myself, beautiful name to you. Jesus was, he was a builder. He was a guy. Yeah. I, do not t- be telling me, Brian, what a beautiful name Brian is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I just think there's things that were, uh, well, no, I mean, fine for you to say that. I just say like it's a little thing. I, I see how we have. No, but like, honestly, what you're, what you're pushing on yeah. is exactly the right thing. Because you said it's vernacular. That's exactly what that is. Fully love Jesus. I got a bunch of dudes in my life who I love. They're like, okay, but that's not, I, when I'm talking about them, that's not what I'm saying, right? And and I, I can't stand the breathy love songs that we sing in churches, and we don't do that at main camp. Those aren't the, that's not the music you hear, right? So I, I totally get what you're saying, but I didn't even notice I was doing it, right? Right. Yeah. Because the, the deeper you get into American Christianity, the more we all naturally take that on. Sure. And it's true, the, the more we do. And a lot of it is healthy. I mean, I need other aspects of my masculinity. I, I need to develop my tender side I, I don't stuff. think there's anything wrong with having feminine characteristics. I think what you pointed out, me saying I fully, you know, someone would fully love Jesus. Yeah, okay, I totally get what you're saying is wrong with that. Whether or not that's feminine or not feminine or masculine, but I don't give a I, But yeah, so yeah. I think you got a good point. I don't know that it's necessarily matters whether or not I have a, I think it's, I think if I don't have any femininity in me at all as a man, I'm a caricature of what a man should be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wow. you, you have a, you, you definitely have a tender side. If we're saying being feminine is having yeah. a tender side, which is not necessarily being feminine, is that's just being godly. Maybe yeah. women have that more so than than many men. Sure. But I just tell you, brother, yeah, you, you you absolutely have a have a tender side too, and I've I've experienced that tender side many times. I'm very very thankful for you. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So, man, I think that's another wrap. We'll see. We'll see what the numbers look like on this one, 512. If it, I mean, people, if people like this one, we'll have you back. If not, Ooh, just, just consider yourself blessed to have been the only person who's been asked back. Oh. We might we might ask somebody else, but you're the first we asked back. And so the only no name. Like, no, who's, the, who's exactly, this guy? Exactly, yeah. exactly. We might ask somebody yeah. else back. But, yeah, you got you got no credibility other than the people loved that initial episode, and, yeah. and you're my friend. That Hopefully that's good enough. So yeah. thankful for you. Yeah, thanks, man. Following up, any way people can keep up with you? Because, my gosh, you've done a lot of stuff. Danger Wheel, Man Camp, yada, yada, yada. Well, how, how might people keep up with 512? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on you know, Instagram, Judd Watkins, uh, Facebook. Uh, websites for dangerwheel.com, man camp, uh, you know, crossroads.net slash man camp. All right. Move is available right now, right now at bryantome.com. We've been doing some pre orders and books actually start shipping today. This is a simple way to set yourself on a course to grow spiritually or to gift to a man in your life. That's movedevotional.com. And just for listeners of The Aggressive Life, you can get $2 off at checkout using the promo code PODCAST. So this is the final episode of Series 2 on The Aggressive Life. We're going to take a little break for the holidays, and we'll be returning in January on a new day, Tuesdays. In the meantime... Come on over to bryantome.com, sign up for the email list, and I'll see you in 2020. Special thanks to the band Judges for our music. You can find more from them on Instagram at The Band Judges or at Facebook.com slash The Band Judges. The Aggressive Life with Brian Tome is a production of Crossroads Church, Cincinnati, Ohio.